back at it again. Um, we, we did we did record this uh, entire interview already, but I was having some tech diffs and uh, there was no audio, so <laughs> so we're doing it again. But no big deal, you know. Um, the The feeling is right. The feeling is good. We've got beautiful natural light today, as opposed to my light that was broken. So today we are here with Callie Little yet again. The gorgeous, the amazing, the magnanimous. Callie Little, and we are talking about the intricacies of sex magic. So before we even get into it, let's go ahead and have a little intro as to who we are speaking with. Yeah. Uh, hello. I'm <laughs> Callie Little. Uh, well, I'm an emotional support witch. So I basically took my peer counseling services and the sex education that I'd been doing for a decade. And, you know, you can't do that without addressing so many aspects of life and for a huge portion of my life I'm I'm a witch I'm a witch all the time but it shows up in in just so many ways and so we started incorporating that into how I help folks and in addition to that I'm uh, an illustrator I have done a lot of portraiture and collage um, I've had some shows throughout the Pacific Northwest, and I've been a journalist for a few years. So I've been published by Vice, Teen Vogue, Architectural Digest, and I signed with a literary agent last year. Hey, that's so wonderful. That's very exciting. Um, yeah. Like incredibly exciting. And what was I going to say? I had something like right on the tip of my tongue, and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to. Portraiture. Portraiture. That, okay, so Kelly has so many facets, like a, a beautiful faceted gem that has been thrust out of the earth. When you started posting your artwork, I was like, come on. Like, you just, there's so much that you can offer the world. And I think, just like you said, like with your being a witch, there is so much that you can offer the world from every aspect of your life and you really do it. Like you really do it. And I think that's such a wonderful yes. thing because you benefit so many different people. You can definitely tap into each individual's like secret sauce. You know what I mean? Because you understand their secret sauce because you have so much secret sauce of your own. So you're just able to connect with so many people in so many ways. And that's something that I appreciate so much. And it's nice to watch you interact with people and to see the different ways that you can offer yourself. I just love that. Thank you. Yeah, I, <clears throat> for a long time, definitely felt the way that I, I think a lot of us feel like I was supposed to do one thing and that because I did a lot of things that must have meant that I wasn't good at any one of them. But you know how it is because you do so many things as well, you know, and there are things, of course, I didn't even mention, like, I'm also a ceramicist and I just got into tattooing human beings. But like, yeah. you could easily be like, oh, I'm a witch. I have a YouTube channel, but you also have like a shop and you do tarot readings and you're a mom and you also make jewelry and candles and so much more. You crochet, you know, we're all these different things. And when we're only looking at one thing, like <clears throat> if somebody comes to me as a sex educator and they say, you know, I'm having pain during intercourse, I, I could just look at what that could mean physically, but also if I'm not considering all of the things that might be contributing to that overall, then I might miss out on helping somebody really figure out a root cause. Yeah. So it, being a multifaceted person, like you said, I think that it contributes to us being just better professionals. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I def I definitely agree with that. Yeah, because there are so many different angles that you can look at anything from. And if you are only using one part of your profession, then you're not seeing all of the other slices of the delicious pie that you can be, you know, offering people. So I totally agree with that. Yes. So we're going to talk about sex magic today. We're going to talk about the different ways that you can use sex magic. We're gonna talk about safety in sex magic. But first, we're gonna talk about what is sex magic? Why would you use sex magic? What is it to you, Callie? 
Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I love that question. Love that, uh, that reporter <laughs> touch of the chin. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I think sex magic is anytime you incorporate increasing sensuality in your craft in order to deepen the practice. So anything that feels involved in your sexuality, whether that's, you know, like deep intimate massage with yourself or with somebody else or penetration or orgasm, it doesn't have to be any or all of those things. It can be however you define sex, just like sex is whatever you consider sex. Um, yeah. And just utilizing that heightened state of arousal to achieve the desired effect in your magical practice. Yes, yes, yes. And it is so powerful. Sex magic is the, like officially, sex magic is the most powerful type of magic. Um, seconded only by music, which I think is really interesting. Sex magic is something that can raise you to such a heightened state and a heightened awareness so that all of your all of your facets for for using the term again kind of come together to create something so beautiful and so personal and i think that whenever you're doing any kind of magic that will just take it to an incredibly incredibly heightened level like it's just it's you focusing so much of your energy and then taking that focus and putting it toward a very specific goal and then shooting that goal out into the universe with an explosion of senses. And I think it's really, it's really incredible and it's really powerful. And it's something that you can do, like you said, by yourself or with a partner if you choose to, but it is, it can be such an amazing experience. And I love that it's something that people can tap into with the partner or by themselves. I think it's really important to, to note that it's not just something that you can like do with someone else. Um, whenever I get questions about sex magic, people are often asking me, you know, like, why would you do it? Or like, who would you do it with? And do you tell that person? Stuff like that. People are always asking about that sort of thing. And I yeah. think that that's important to note as well. Like what, how do you involve, or what do you think about when you are, approaching sex magic what are the, the rules the ins the outs and suggestions that you have about asking a partner about sex magic and things like that those are really excellent considerations and i agree i think that if somebody is considering incorporating sexuality into their magical practice and they're wanting to include anybody else that's like a whole extra layer right um you you asked so many questions there like I did. <laughs> why would you why would you even do it like what's the point um it is <sighs> my brain is too fast sometimes for my little tiny human mouth all right <clears throat> <laughs> so when we enter heightened states of arousal and i mean arousal in the generic term not necessarily sexual so it yeah. could be sexual arousal or it could be fear or excitement uh vulnerability anything where you are feeling a lot you're feeling kind of flooded with emotion when we're entering those states our brain enters a state of neuroplasticity and yeah. so when our brain is like, I always describe it as like juicy or soft. Um, <laughs> when your brain's like really wet, <laughs> it's more capable of making neural pathways more easily. And so how I describe neural pathways to folks is imagine you are going on a hike. So if you are in a national forest, you know, there's a paved hike. It has been laid out for you. It's been walked on so many times. You can't miss it. And that's what those neural pathways in our brain are that we have like just done over and over and over again. Yeah. Like when you think I'm thirsty, I need to get a glass of water. You don't consciously think I'm going to stand up now. So I'm sending energy to my legs to stand up. I'm going to walk. I'm going to keep walking. I'm going to go into the kitchen. I'm going to open the cabinet. All of those little steps 
that's all one neural pathway and it is so deeply ingrained you don't even have to think about it that pathway is just right in front of you when you are developing new neural pathways imagine you're at the foot of that trail and you think but i want to go over there into the brush right there's going to be a ton of stuff in the way and you maybe make it through once but it's kind of challenging and then when you're at the head of that trail the next time, you're probably not going to be able to see where the path you took was. But when you're working with heightened neuroplasticity, it's like taking a machete in there and clearing the brush, you know, exactly. You're like tamping the ground down. You are making it more deeply ingrained in your brain. And it's actually like a, a groove, right? So when you are in those heightened states of arousal, your consciousness can just absorb more deeply. You can create more longer lasting habits, more ingrained beliefs. And I do want to add the caveat that I have no degrees in anything. This is all just amateur <laughs> studies. So if I'm wrong, listen, I'm not a doctor, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm right. So we can get into those heightened states by inducing whatever emotion it is we want to work with. Sexuality is extremely accessible to a lot of us, not everybody. And it's okay if sex magic isn't for you. If sex isn't for you, it isn't for everybody. Asexuality is totally valid. End of story. If sex is something that is accessible to you and it feels good to involve in your practice, it's such a quick way to tap in to all of those juicy emotions. You know, it's the one activity that accesses dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins all at once. You can, it's, it's such a powerful potion. So how you would do that depends on if you're alone or with a partner. That was so much information though. And, it, and, <laughs> Your question had so many layers. It's like, it's like layers. building the grooves. And I'm like looking at the pictures that you're painting. I'm like building grooves in the forest of my brain. Like, yeah, yeah. I love that. I yeah. love, I love when you said creating habits, like creating deep seated, um, like structures for that habit to, to kind of sit in, you know, that's really, it's really good. It's a really good. I'm like adding it into my to-do list like oh right okay yeah so later on yeah. I have to make sure that I think about habits that I want to keep <laughs> I mean yeah it's it's kind of like only in that way <laughs> but it's kind of like the idea of hypnosis you know you're working with your subconscious you're deepening these belief systems so one of the ways that you can work with this is to get into one of those states of arousal and start repeating affirmations. Um, and, and I'll get into, you know, how to do that alone, how to do it with somebody else, what considerations to have, but you can just say the things that you want to believe. You can say the things you want to be true. You know, if you're trying to work with abundance, prosperity, magic, you can, you know, be masturbating and talking to yourself about how the, all the money that I am worthy of is on its way to my bank account right now. I, I am welcoming all of the abundance that's awaiting me in the universe. It, it kind of has to, you know, be in that same magical framework of active speech so you're not saying like i wish i had this thing you're saying like i have it it's yes, coming to me because that's what you want to be settling into your body and your mind mm -hmm. yeah it's mine it's mine when i check my awesome. bank account it's there yeah yeah that's one of the things that i love doing when it comes to that is like adding things to my cart <laughs> Oh, I'm going to get all of these and just add them all to my cart because I know I'm going to get them as soon as the money drops, they're mine. <laughs> I love thinking of that as a spell. That's You're so good at magical framework. Like there was that time a few months ago where I sent you a text and I was like, so I was having sex with one of my partners in a hotel and we literally set the bed on fire. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> and you were like, that is powerful sex magic. And I was like, damn, you're right. I was all stressed thinking about, are they going to find me $600 for this bed? They did not. <laughs> They felt yeah, the power but, in the room. They're like, yeah. oh, okay, this was fine. <laughs> yeah, they were they were very kind about it. Um, thanks, Airbnb. <sighs> but the the framework of like I'm putting this in my cart because I'm I'm welcoming that. I love that. It kind of reminds me of that famous story uh, that Jim Carrey told in the '90s on Oprah. He said that he wrote himself a check for like $10 million. Oh, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. And he carried it in his wallet. And I think it was for like a, a determinate amount of time. It was like dated. And it turned out that the same time it was dated for, I don't remember if it was like the month or year, but he got a movie contract for like $10 million. And I love that kind of decisive like I'm doing this as a spell for myself energy it's also just fun to add stuff to a cart yeah I love adding stuff to my cart <laughs> it is fun I love my that Etsy cart perpetually has over 90 things oh yeah mine too for sure yeah and then I even put like timestamps on them like when I make my list I'll put timestamps on okay this is for this time of year so that when this comes around I'll get ready to get these things I'll be ready to receive those things like, I have things like marked off by season in my favorites <laughs> I love that always ready so you had asked about like how do you responsibly involve somebody else in sex magic yeah <clears throat> yeah yeah uh it's a really good question. So I subscribe to the belief of not involving people in my magic without their consent. And not everybody subscribes to that. And I'm not going to tell them they should because it's your practice and I don't know you. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. <laughs> for me personally, I, I would suggest if you align with the values I align with um, that if you want to incorporate somebody into your sex magic, whether that means you're involving something about them or you're involving their physical presence, uh, just talk to them about it first. So obviously that can be a really vulnerable conversation because despite the fact that we're in this renaissance of witchcraft, most people still yeah. aren't like, I'm a witch, I do magic. Yeah. So mm -hmm. saying <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, my spouse, is is not super into the woo stuff um they'll occasionally humor me but when i asked them if they wanted to do some sex magic work with me they were kind of like yeah obviously that sounds really fun because yeah. oh yeah it's oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so vulnerable and bonding and it's such a powerful way to build each other up. You know, if you're working with affirmations, like I was talking about, if the affirmation is that you want to be loving yourself and you want to, <laughs> if you want to get tongue tied, if you want to be yes. learning to love yourself really well, and you would like your partner there to help build that belief saying, you know, I am valuable. I am worthy. I am made of love. And then having your partner say back to you, you are valuable, you are worthy, you are made of love while you're orgasming. Like how beautiful and incredible is that? Yeah, imagine the power, like the, the hit of power to your brain at that moment. Like that is a moment that completely is about you. And like, when do you get that? When do you, when, when do you get that kind of like attention and that kind of like positive affirmation while you're having like a really positive body explosion in your brain. That's just, it's, that's amazing. I want that for everyone yeah. immediately. <laughs> everyone yeah. who wants it, I want I, that for them. I love people enjoying themselves. Uh, and that looks different for everyone. So, you know, if the idea of having somebody witness that in you is really overwhelming, I would say, don't worry about it. You know, there's plenty of sex magic you can do on your own. Um, y there's no reason you can't do any of that solely by yourself. And also 
whether it's emotionally comforting or sexually arousing, you can imagine, you know, deities there with you or in your body. One of my favorite ways to work with my deities of choice is to welcome them to experience my pleasure, welcome them into my body. And I think it's super hot. Yeah, I mean, I, I yes. Oven was on now. Listen to your your little East Coast peeking out. They were on. The they were on. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Jody always gets on me for saying it, and I'm like, what? What is it? What is it on? Is it on? No, it's on. Is it? It's on. <laughs> we were talking about how to experience sex magic on your own. How to experience it with a partner. And one of the things we haven't talked about yet is, you know, what kind of partner do you involve? Because it's certainly not for every partnership. I would say if you are not 100% sure, and I mean 100, not 99, you're not 100% sure that your partner is fully supportive, I would not involve them because... It's it's not because, you know, it's going to ruin your relationship or anything like that. You'll be fine. But because in magic, you don't want to have a person involved if there's any sense of doubt. If there's any sense of this is weird and dumb and stupid and embarrassing and cringe or whatever. You want all of the energy present to be fully devoted and believing and, and full of confidence. Because yeah. a seed of doubt in there, you are planting it. It's going to grow, you know, and you don't want your yeah. spell to be doubting you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I always, people say like, what is the reason why my things aren't working? Why isn't my spell working? Why isn't my, you know, my honey jar isn't sweet or anything? I was like, well, are you doubting yourself? Are you doubting what you're doing? Are you second guessing everything that you do? Like understand, I understand that it's sometimes you are worried about whether or not something is working or someone might be like a little bit cautious or they might be a little bit scared, you know, yeah. but, and that's okay. Like that's, that's natural. You know, this is something that not everyone has, you know, ingrained in their lives. So like a little bit of like, mm, is okay. But like, understand that you can have what you want and things can work out the way that you want them to and believe in yourself. Just believe in your ability to want things and believe that you deserve them. You know, believe that you deserve the things that you're asking for. And then it's going to happen a lot more, you know, smoothly. You'll feel better, you'll feel confident because like doubt, yeah, it, it messes up everything. Doubt comes into your brain and tells you, you can't do things, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't try that, you can't. And it's a false voice, doesn't belong there. Knock it out because you do you can have it you know you do deserve it so just give it a try and yeah little pieces of doubt and especially when some people think that things are corny like mm, this is the gum this is lame that kind of energy does not belong in your magic circle mm -mm. no because like the things that you believe in that you're interested in are not corny or lame or stupid no they are a part of your personality that you're trying to express to someone else so if they're not receiving that you know in an open way then they don't need to be involved in your rising you know i just don't think so <laughs> agreed and i mean if it's somebody who thinks that things that are important to you are embarrassing and negative i would say maybe consider whether or not that's a supportive partnership I know that when I was really, like I had been percolating in my witchcraft for a long time. Yeah. And at the beginning of quarantine, it just started bubbling over. You know, I needed something and it just was coming up. And somebody I was dating at the time broke up with me because he said that it was embarrassing. And I was like, wow, what? yeah, yeah. And I was like, well, first of all, it's really sexist. <laughs> like, yeah, 
considering the history of witchcraft and secondly like really and he was like well it's not because it's witchcraft it's because like it, it's any religion i'm just so traumatized by religion and like get over yourself okay. but <laughs> in the end you know that person really did me a favor by being honest with me that he was yeah. judging me so harshly because is that somebody is that evil lie somebody i want to be loving no that's a bit and that's i feel like that's a big call out for magic in general when it comes to people in your lives that you want to involve in your life and you want to be closer with if they not even yeah. just magic like everything this is like a mama mint moment anything in your life that you enjoy that someone else in your life makes you feel little or or like you need to hide it or you have to like put it to the side you can't talk about it when they're around because they don't because it makes them think that you're corny or that you're like you know weird oh no that does not that does not belong in your life at all that does not belong they need some yeah. some time to grow up you know, they really need some time to like think yes. about who they are and why they believe that something that someone else enjoys should be mocked because that is doo doo behavior. That is doo doo behavior, and yeah. I just don't like that. <laughs> There's this saying that the more light you cast, the more shadows you'll see. And mm -hmm. I love that. Also, there's a huge difference between shaming someone or being embarrassed by them and being indifferent because plenty of people are going to be like oh you're a witch cool whatever i don't really care and that's way different way different than somebody being like ew gross so you know if your partner is like i'm not into tarot i'm sorry but good for you that that's okay your partner doesn't have to be interested in everything you're interested in Mine isn't, and we're in a loving relationship. I know that you and your partner have all kinds of different hobbies. Yeah, 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 for sure. And that's, yeah, like, that's fine. As long as they aren't putting you down for the things that you enjoy. Yeah. They're just like, yeah, but it's, it's, there's a balance, you know, there's a definitely a balance. And if you feel like there is an imbalance in the support and just the love in your relationship when it comes to things that you enjoy by yourself and they feel like, you know, they want you to support all their things, but they won't support any of yours or, you know, um, they want you to join in their, their, all their hobbies, but like yours are lame. Like you have to pay attention to that because it's so, so important. Like my husband, if I'm like, oh, I'm yeah. doing like a prosperity spell you want in, he's like, yeah, he pulls out a knife and just starts slicing. We need blood. We need hair. Like he's, he's like ready for anything, but like not everyone's going to be that way. You know, some people will be like, no, nah, it's cool. Yeah. And like continue on with their life. And the not it's cool is totally fine. That is fine. That is acceptance. And, and that is like, they understand that they're not into it, but it's cool. But as soon as they go over into that zone where they're just like sneering or what, like, no, that's when you say, okay, there's a little bit of a, and maybe we should just, you know what I mean? No, no words needed. Just, just the, this, the Drake hand. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. I'm a thousand years old. <laughs> so we talked about how to share your sex magic. We talked about what it was and what it feels like and what you can achieve. What about the safety aspects of sex magic when it comes to bringing yourself not only like energetic safety and but also physical safety and things that you should just think about when you're getting into that zone because it is a very vulnerable zone, a vulnerable zone as well i think with any magical practice you know having a go-to way of opening your space casting your circle it's so important um not only because it's protective but because it gets you in the mindset and I think that a lot of the wards in our lives are subconscious. I think we're casting wards all the time, really setting protective barriers between ourselves and energies we don't want around us. So that being said, I think naming it is so important and powerful. When I'm starting any practice, I have a pretty basic go-to framework. I invite my spirits that I'm working with and I ask them to share their guidance, wisdom, and protection with me. And I say something along the lines of, you know, all who do not wish 
for the highest good of myself and all in my community are not welcome here. Something really basic, you know, unless you have like big scary stuff that I am not familiar with, I would say that kind of basic framework is a really nice way to open up. As far as physical safety goes, uh, you know, don't put things in holes that weren't designed to go in holes. <laughs> Um, people love to be like, oh my God, I got this oblong crystal. You know what? A lot, yes. a lot of crystals are not body safe. Like selenite will dissolve and it's toxic. So if you wouldn't put it in your mouth, do not put it in another orifice. And if the back door is the orifice you go for, do not get anything without a flared base. You know, if you're not sure about what you can and can't put in your body, talk to a sex educator. Myself, a million people on the internet, your local trusted sexuality boutique, go to them and be like, hey, I want a gem for protection and I wanna put it in my butt. What should I do? And they will have an answer for you. Maybe don't go to the creepy one under the highway with like an old man that's gonna stare at you from behind the counter, but that's not most sex boutiques anymore. Yeah. <laughs> most, of, most of them are a lot more progressive, young, queer friendly, um, probably full of witches, honestly. So yeah. if, you, if you're unsure, just talk to a professional, but yeah, be safe with what you're putting in your body. Don't put you know, fruit or all kinds of like cooking oils or Florida water in orifices oh because it's not yes. made for that. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I, yes, I really stress people look up, do your research on what crystals are safe to put in or on your body. Seriously, I see some really interesting pieces being made and they are sometimes made, like phallic symbols are made just to go on your altar. Sometimes they're made just to be a representation of the masculine without it also being something that you can put inside your body. That is like, I, I, yeah. I can't tell you, I see it far too much. It's far too much. Even at the shop that I, I worked at, it was like a little scary, the things that they were selling and people were saying, oh yeah, you can use this to masturbate. And I'm like, no, you cannot, please don't. Please do not put that inside your body be safe yeah you know anything that has like a shimmer or a sheen to it probably has some heavy metals in it you don't want to put that in your body um selenite dissolves stuff like clear quartz and rose quartz great totally safe quartz? yeah but uh when i was working at a a, a well-known boutique here in seattle and we were selling a very well-known brand of gem dildos um, that I'm not gonna name, but it's the one you're thinking of. Okay. We, whenever we got them in, we would get the, um, the clear quartz and the rose quartz, and we would have to just test them by just trying to, not yeah. even trying to break, like the same resistance that it would take to just feel yeah. that this pen is hard. And some of them would just snap. So, if you are ordering something on the internet and you get it to your house, just, you know, give it a couple whacks on your hand. It should be able to withstand anything that like a, a drinking glass can withstand for sure. It should be able to withstand more than that, in fact. But double check it because you would rather deal with sending it back and getting a replacement than going to the emergency room. Yes. Oh my gosh, <laughs> the thoughts, the thoughts that come into my head. <laughs> uh, there are so many different ways that we can experience the power that comes with this kind of sexual magic without even using penetration as well. Like there are just so many different ways that you can explore yourself and just explore the feelings and just the, the sensations without any kind of, you know, actual penetration. So, so don't worry about that. If you're not a penetration person, like you'll be fine, you know, just with that heightened sense of awareness and just that 
being really present with your body, you're still raising that energy and you're still raising that kind of um, lovely sort of sparkly cloud around your body. So it's still very, very much possible if you're not a penetration person. Abso absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, something that we talked about in our first iteration of this chat is that some folks have a lot of trauma. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. If anybody is, yeah. you know, feeling uncomfortable, you don't have to listen. It's totally okay. But if you do have sexual trauma and you want to learn a little bit about how to heal some of that, great. A lot of us who have experienced any kind of, even just, just physical trauma, but especially sexual trauma can carry a lot of pain and a lot of PTSD around any sexual, I would say pleasure, but it's hard to define it as pleasure when it's traumatizing, right? So even if we're feeling pleasure, it can be tainted in so many other emotions and physical sensations, and it can even be really painful. One of the resources that I recommend the most often for people who have sexual trauma and they have a vagina is a book called Female Ejaculation and the G-Spot by author Deborah Sundahl. And in that book, she, you know, is very focused on the concept of female ejaculation, or as I call it vaginal ejaculation, because not everybody likes calling it a vagina. Um, or uh, not everybody who has a vagina is female. <laughs> <laughs> and also some people don't like the word vagina, but yeah. she addresses how to begin working with your body to overcome that trauma, how to heal it through mindful masturbation. She, of course, the book is predominantly focused on ejaculation, but there's a whole chapter devoted to healing sexual trauma through identifying certain parts of the vaginal anatomy. So I highly recommend that resource and also, you know, working with a therapist. I'm such a big fan of therapy. I have a mental health and magic podcast, which I didn't even mention in the intro called the pocket <laughs> coven podcast, um, which I host with my bestie and cousin, Amber Lenore, who's a licensed therapist. Um, I go to therapy twice a month and it has helped me so much, you know, in overcoming the complex PTSD of my life and also the trauma of being sexually assaulted just a few years ago. So I know firsthand that it changes you as a person. And I know firsthand that you can heal a lot of wounds. Of course, everybody's different. Of course, everybody has different struggles and um, even different resources. So therapy might be difficult to come by, but there is always something for everybody. And if you're unsure how to find therapy, you can look up free therapy in your state, government assisted therapies. There are so many programs to help us get through the hardest parts of our lives. For sure. Yeah. Um, and I always, 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 Whenever I talk to any of my friends or family and they're like, oh, I wish I could go to therapy, but I can't afford it and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I understand that. And I, I go to therapy also um, two to three times a month and it is paid for by the government because I have government insurance because I applied for it and I was able to get it. And it's super, I feel like it's super important for everyone. If you are wondering whether or not you can um, have that assistance, just to fill it, just fill it out, go online for your state, just fill it out and they'll let you know whether or not you qualify for that assistance. And it can be so incredibly helpful. My therapist is wonderful. And some people think like, you know, oh, it's government, um, it's a government program, so it's not going to be good. You know, I'm going to have to wait forever. That is not true. That is not true. There is a beautiful amount of doctors and therapists, psychiatrists, psychologists that want to help everyone. You know, they want everyone to have that resource. And so this is the avenue that they went in. My therapist is wonderful. She's so sweet. My word, like 
just so nurturing mm-hmm. and you can find someone and you know get that kind of assistance so i i really i highly recommend that you just give it a try if you're someone who can't you know um afford to pay for therapy and you are wondering if you qualify just fill out the form and see just give it a try and see and you might be surprised and then you might be able to get some help that you didn't know you could get you know i think it's always worth trying for everybody i'm I'm literally always telling everybody like you should just see um about the assistance assistance in your state and see if you can get some because it's it's wonderful it's a great resource yeah i agree uh i i love free help I grew up below the poverty line and I've barely made my way out of it as an adult. Um, And there were so many years of my life where I didn't take advantage of any of the programs that would have been available to me. And when I think about it, it wasn't even, it wasn't out of ego or pride. It was purely that I thought it was gonna be so much work. And having been an adult and gone through those processes it's actually a lot easier than it seems like it might be it's it's always less paperwork than you think it's going to be you know it is this has been wonderful this is a a wonderful discussion i think that everyone should open up and talk more about the kind of um sensual magic that you can create with yourself and other people because it is like i said it's it's the strongest form of magic you know what i mean it's just it's so powerful and so accessible if you you just give it a try just jump in there Uh, and what resources do you have for us that we can that i can link in the description box people can type and touch and and see what they can find out yeah uh well one of my favorite resources for sex magic is Barbara Corellis. She's an incredible teacher and author. She wrote Urban Tantra and Pleasure is Necessary. Um, I was lucky enough to get to go to one of her breath orgasm workshops and she actually sells a breath orgasm meditation on her website. It's very affordable. I've done it with my spouse. We both cried and it's so magical. Um, Highly recommend. Yeah. I also would say for anybody curious about the history of sex magic because it is fascinating um the book heaven's bride about ida c craddock is fascinating i haven't read all of it so you know if it ends up being like wild and terrible in the second half i make no claims but the first half so far very good um and she was just an incredible american mystic and hated hated by this lawman who really was trying to get everybody to stop enjoying sex altogether. It's a fascinating time in history. And if you want to learn more about modern sex magic, uh, my pal Sophie St. Thomas has a book called Sex Witch that is really beautiful. And she, we had her on our podcast uh, in an episode about sex magic. And we talk about a spell that she did when she and I met, we were in uh, Jamaica and she was doing some like long distance flirting with her honey back in New York. And she describes that spell. I have, I have taken that spell. I've used it. It works. It's great. (laughs) So I would say her book and that episode of my podcast, the pocket coven. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll have all of those things linked down, including the podcast, below. And where can we find you, Callie? All over the internet. Where are you? So many places, but mainly I try to focus on Instagram where I'm gosh, Callie, uh, C-A-L-L-I-E. And you can also find me on my website, CallieLittle.com. And I publish a ton of great content really valuable stuff all the time on my Patreon, which is, I believe, Callie Little. Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on the show, on the show, on the Mint Coven show. Thank you for being here and discussing this very important topic. And I hope to see you more on the channel, talking about some other things in the future as well. Me too. Thank you for having me. I would love to know what your folks want to hear us talk about. And um, thanks for wearing my hoodie that I made, by the way. I <laughs> forgot I'm wearing this gorgeous hoodie that Callie has designed. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, These are all of Callie's illustrations. The worm. I love it. 
I love it. It's so cute. I love it. As soon as I opened it up, I was like, yes, I must put it on immediately. So yeah. You're so cute in it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All the links will be in the description box. And thank you everyone for watching. Thank you Kelly for being here. And we'll see you in the yeah. next video. Mwah, 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 mwah.